Hey, go Phantom Thomas Mike. Welcome to Philadelphia Eagles Now. Mailbag time. It is the weekend. Hope you guys are having a great weekend and ready for me to answer, hopefully, your mailbag question. Did it get answered? We are going to go ahead and find out. Before, though, we start, make sure you guys are subscribed to our channel as we're trying to grow as fast as possible. And we are growing at a tremendous rate here as training camp is here. Preseason is coming upon us. And obviously, the NFL season is just upon the horizon. If you love the Eagles and are brand new, go down below and hit that subscribe button. All right, as we always do, here's the weekend. Let's jump into your mailbag questions. Cool Rain says, I've read that Quez Watkins has really, uh, has starts, has started, started, sorry, has started really well in training camp. Do you think he will get some time, uh, some game time this year? I think he's going to make the roster, and we talked about this in my 53-man roster breakdown uh, video a couple of days ago, whether it was yesterday or the day before, I don't really remember, but I, I said Quez Watkins is just doing that. He's been playing very, very well. I think he is going to go ahead and make the final roster. I think he's going to try to go ahead and, and do that by playing well in the preseason. Like, he plays well in training camp, but preseason is where not just himself, but the rest of the wide receivers on the wide receiver depth chart are going to go ahead and, and, and win or lose, right? If you're John Hightower, if you're J.J. Thicke Whiteside, if you're Quez Watkins, I mean, if you want to be one of the final wide receivers of the five or six or seven that are going to make the team, you have to not only show up every day, you have got to show me that even though you're playing as a backup quarterback, you have Nick Mullins and Joe Flacco throwing you the football, you have got to play well. I think Watkins is going to go ahead and do that, but I agree. He's had a really good training camp, and he looks fast, and he's doing really well off the line of scrimmage and getting away from cornerbacks. I think he's going to make the team, and if he makes the team, then he'll be out there during games, and if he plays well, then you know we'll see what happens. Um... Christopher Rountree always gets a question in. Christopher, I appreciate it. He says, who do you think should start, Josh Sweat or Derek Barnett? Sweat. 100%. Like, like, Sweat is having a great camp. Like, no two buts about it. I mean, Josh Sweat has had a fantastic training camp from everything that we've heard and seen so far up there at the Novacare Complex. Does that mean Derek Barnett has had a bad training camp? No, he's had a good training camp. I think he's been fine. And then Philadelphia brought him back for one final year, fifth-year option for a reason, because they need extra depth at a defensive end perspective. But if you're asking me, of the two, snap one of the first regular season game in Atlanta, 1 p.m. on Fox, presumably, on September 12th. Who will it be? It'll be Josh Sweat. And I mean, it's very clearly, barring injury, going to go ahead and be Josh Sweat. He has been fantastic so far in training camp. He had a bull rush of Andre Dillard this week that made Andre Dillard, albeit it's Andre Dillard, but it made Andre Dillard look really silly. I love what Sweat has brought. The fact he's a later-round draft pick and he's being blossomed into a starting defensive end is great. He is 100% going to go ahead and be the starter, barring massive changes that I cannot predict at the moment of filming this video here on on the weekend. Um, who starts? Do you, do you agree? Is it, is it Josh Sweat at defensive end? Is it Derek Barnett? Let me know who you think will be the starting defensive end by going down below and typing S for Josh Sweat. S, you know, last name. Or type B down below for Derek Barnett. Give me your thoughts down below in the comments section. All right, before we go and keep going here, of course, BetUS, our friends and partner here at Chat Sports, is going to help you out to win some money. Hopefully, you guys want to bet on not only the Eagles, but any other sport going on right now into the NFL season. Do it with our friends at BetUS. By going to chatsports.com forward slash Eagles bet, putting your $100 down and using that deposit bonus by getting our promo code or using the promo code Eagles125. So use our link, use our promo code, get 125% deposit bonus whenever you first sign up. As we mentioned before, Philadelphia's odds to win the NFC East are the worst, and you saw the Giants brawling at training camp this past week and that Joe Judge is struggling and Dak Prescott has a shoulder injury and no one's vaccinated with the Washington football team and so come on Philadelphia bet on the Eagles to win the NFC East I feel good about it you guys should too chessboards.com forward slash Eagles bet promo code uh, is Eagles 125 Chris says, realistically, given our pretty easy schedule, see the Eagles being a dark horse to get a top three seed uh, in the NFC East yeah I mean top three's tough you want to talk about winning the East is a whole different thing, but I mean, top three is possible just because of, you know, listen, some dueling factors. First off, there's a case for each team in the East to be a top three team. I just mentioned all the downside of Dak Prescott's shoulder and Joe Judge's coaching and Washington's unvaccinated status alongside their quarterback, but Washington also has a great defense, and the Cowboys have really good weapons on the offensive side of that football, and the, the Giants, I mean, too, have very good weapons on the offensive side of the football as well. They had Saquon Barkley back, so... Everybody has a case to be winners in the NFC East, but I do think the third seed is a possibility due to the fact that you look at the rest of the conferences here. The NFC West is going to obliterate themselves. I mean, every single team there could win the whole thing. I mean, they're all really good. They play each other twice. They're going to beat up on each other big time. The NFC South, I think, takes a step back this year. I don't think that they're going to have a team that, besides the Bucks, that gets to 10 wins. I mean, I think the Saints are going to struggle this year. 
Atlanta maybe gets to 10 wins. Carolina doesn't have a quarterback unless Sam Darnold plays well. Um, and you look at the rest of the NFC with the North, the Vikings could be good this year. The Packers should be good this year, but I mean, that's basically it. And so I think there's, there's a chance for Philadelphia if they win the NFC East to be the three, the third seed. The schedule is easy. That does help. But I think the focus should be just win the division. Because even if you are the four seed, you still host a playoff game. Like the three seed, the four seed is not a big difference. It's the one and the two that, that get the buys. And so overall, you know, it doesn't really matter. But win the division is possible, although there's a case for every single team as, you know, there always is. Um, Tim says, you can start about reports saying Jalen Hurts is still inaccurate. I know he has plenty of time to improve, but still. Um, I don't know where we're getting the inaccuracy reports from training camp because I, I am not seeing it. Listen, Hurts is having a great camp. And Elliot Short Parks from 94.1 WIP, kind of the big Eagle reporter, he's very dramatic too. I mean, he has a lot of hot takes as an Eagle reporter. He tracks because he's there every single throw that Hurts has done. And Hurts has been very accurate. I mean, he was 14 for 14 at practice, what, three days ago this week? Whatever it was. Was it Thursday? Was it Wednesday? I don't really remember. He was, he's was he been accurate. Now, there's a very famous tweet going on right now of the NFL Network, which was live from Eagle Training Camp. They were talking about the inaccuracy of Jalen Hurts, and he sailed one over Zach Hurts' head. Like, they were in filming on it and, like, sailed over Zach Hurts' head, and people freaked out. But you got to remember, that was during warm-ups, and Hurts has been inaccurate during warm-ups, but as Elliot pointed out, or parked with the 94.1 WIP, he's been money so far uh, in the actual, you know, game reps, the simulated practices that they've done so far. So I'm hearing good things about Jalen Hurts. I know that there are people out there that love to hate Hurts, and you're seeing some some stuff there on Twitter, but, you know, people who are actually there are saying he's had a really good camp. And the quote that gets me and brings me back and gives me chills is that someone said, it was a reporter in Philadelphia, if Hurts had been the number one pick this year, people would be raving about the camp that he's having because he's a second-year guy and he was also a second-round draft pick and people have kind of put him down a little bit too much. They're saying, oh, well, you know, it's expected. He's had a really good camp. Believe that. Trust me. He's had a really good training camp. Let me ask you guys this, though. Are you hearing good or bad things? I want to gauge you guys on this because I'm hearing good things, but obviously, you know, Chris was saying, or Tim is saying he's heard bad things. Have you been hearing good or bad things about Jalen Hurts in training camp so far? Type G down below for good or type B down below for bad. Again, I've only heard good things. If you've heard bad things, type B and tell me what bad things you've heard because I, again, have not heard anything bad so far about Jalen Hurts. Um, let's see here. Uh, is this Rod? Rod says, uh, with his yards per carry average, why don't we run Miles Sanders a little more? Good question. I mean, that's that's a really good question. I think they need to just utilize him more as a whole, not just running the football, but catching the ball in the backfield. I mean, Philadelphia, I mean, the Eagles are throwing to running backs a lot so far in training camp. That's been something that a lot of reporters have noticed is that they're using the backs out of the backfield more so than they have in the past. Nick Sirianni and uh, Steve Seachin, uh, the offensive coordinator, were both at the beach uh, a, a, a while ago, and they came into the hotel, and there was a wedding party going on. It was a Philadelphia Eagle wedding party, like they were Philadelphia, Philadelphia Eagle fans, and they all took pictures and stuff. We're high five. There's a cool video of it right now. But at the end, one of the guys yells, "Run the ball more, Nick!" And so I think a lot of us understand that Sanders is really good. Run the football. I think they used the, the, the run game less last year due to injuries. I think the offensive line was not what you know it was supposed to be. But if the Eagle offensive line is what it's going to be this year. I mean, they're going to run the football a lot. It's not just going to be Miles Sanders. It's going to be Boston Scott. It's going to be Karen Johnson. It's going to be, um, obviously, Kenny Gainwell. I think they're going to be a top 10 rushing team. Could even be a top 5 rushing team. they got a stable of backs, and I agree. Um, Sanders' is yard, yards per carry is, is like, was like number one in the league last year or whatever it was. It was really high. I think they're going to run the ball a lot more, and they obviously should. Okay, we'll do one more here. Um, Colin says, why do we consistently have key players getting injured? Just bad luck, or does it have something to do with our training staff not preparing our players well enough? Nothing to do with the training staff. This happens. And listen, the Colts are having the injury bug right now. Uh, there's another team out there that's had the injury bug. I forget what, what, what one it is. There have been a couple injuries, but we're not going to freak out about it. I mean, Smith's going to be back sooner rather than later. Karen Kerrigan's doing a little hand injury, not a big deal. Brandon Brooks is a little hamstring, not a big deal. Like, these are all minor injuries so far. Philadelphia's avoided knock on wood, the major injury, so that's key. But, you know, injuries have been a problem uh, in the in, in the past, but they've been more long-term injuries than what we've had so far. And Smith's still out there learning with the guys, catching footballs, you know, working on a little bit of light running. And so uh, I'm not worried about him missing too much, as some people are overall. But I think the injury bug is going to, you know, subside. I think it's been fine overall. All right, there you go. There is all the time we have for today here on our Saturday weekend mailbag video. Thank you guys for tuning in and enjoying this. Hopefully you get your question in for next week's mailbag by going down below in this mailbag and ask a question. Hashtag Eagles is the hashtag you need. Type away down below. Ask as many as you want. And the best five or six or seven I'll pull for next week's mailbag video. Uh, as always, make sure you guys are subscribed because all these players or people were subscribers and that's how you get on the mailbag video. You gotta be a subscriber. It's just kind of the little, the little secret rule here. So if you want in on the club, subscribe and then you ask your mailbag question and then more than likely... I will go ahead and pull it for next week's video. 
Alright, be sure you guys are subscribed again. Ultimate for today here on today's Field of Eagles mailbag video. Plenty of stuff happening next week, so stay tuned. We have fresh news and rumors coming up on Monday, as we always do here on the channel as we get closer to the first preseason game against the Pittsburgh Steelers on August 12th. Again, I'm Thomas Mott as we go ahead and sign off. Stay safe out there for the rest of your day.